We welcome you to another live edition of the Sports Box, brought to you by our sponsor, Showcase Sports in Hamilton. Showcase Sports for the elite athlete. And by our friends over at Crowdplay. Download the free Crowdplay app today and check them out at www.crowdplayapp.com for details. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. Hey everybody, welcome to Cage by Q. I'm your host, d Today we will be previewing the Belcher 259 uh, main card featuring the main event of Leslie Smith versus Chris Cyborg 2 for the Women's Championship right there. This, this will be a rematch from their uh, first bout, which saw Chris, Chris Cyborg win by first round submission. Uh, once again, this is Cage by IQ. We are sponsored by 99Jersey. Use promo code SportsboxShow20 at checkout to receive 20% off your per- next purchase. Once again, this is 99Jersey, your number one place of boutique sportswear in the United States. Use promo code SportsboxShow20 at checkout. To receive twenty percent off your next purchase, if you if there's a jersey uh, for your favorite sports team, or if you like the Mighty Ducks, or or if you like uh, Space Jam, go to www.99jersey.com. They would likely have it. Go get it there. Use promo code SportsboxShow20 at checkout and receive twenty percent off. What's better than uh, getting your favorite jersey and then to get it with a 20% discount? That's all I got to say. But uh, they are our sponsor right now, so let, let them know we set you and then rep your, your team or show first. So once again, that is 99 jersey. And then once again, we are Cage My IQ, the first best place for MMA content. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Twitch, and then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cage My IQ because we're the best place for MMA content. We do do the best preview and recap uh, videos and interviews on YouTube. So definitely check us out. We do all four promotions right now. So that if you miss a thing, go to our YouTube page, and we're we got all the content there you need to get caught up on every MMA promotion right now, majorly. But let's get to the first fight uh, of the four card, uh, main card for Bellator 259, which is a middleweight matchup between Christian Edwards going up against Ben Parrish. Uh, This is a matchup where you got uh, Christian Edwards, who is a a nice uh, young favorite of of the promotion right now, where they're giving him these small fights to build him up because they have uh, high hopes for him in the future. Uh, as you see right here, this is one of his victories that he had where he knocked the guy out. But when you look at the, uh, when you look at the, everything going on with this matchup, you got Christian Edwards who is four zero right now, professionally, ever since he turned pro, he came to Belter and he's won his last four fights he has beat Ben uh, Meeks by KO. He's beat Justin Vargas in his debut at Belter by KO. He's beat Zazar Bennett by KO TKO. He's beat Marco Hutch by decision. And in his last fight, he beat Hamza Salim by rear naked choke submission. Uh, he's coming in fighting out of Oklahoma. He's 22 years old. 204 and a half pounds. He's 6'5", which is a big thing in the light heavyweight uh, uh, division for him. And he has that 78.5 reach advantage in the matchup. Whereas his opponent is Ben Parrish, who uh, was a pretty big prospect a couple years ago, but between getting hurt and then not fighting for a two-year span, his uh, prospect status has dropped uh, significantly compared to Christian Edwards. He he has that explosive nature. He's a Muay Thai fighter. Uh, he wants to come after, after you with explosion. And he was even a champion in CFFSC for a little while. But he is 4-1 four, uh, four in his last five fights. He beat Damian Melton. 
He beat Link Bat Batie by submission. He beat Jordan Val by submission. He beat Teddy Holder by submission. And in his last fight, he lost to uh, Logan Woods by KO, TKO, leg injury a year ago. He fights out of Tennessee. He is six foot, and then he, uh, he there's no reach uh, available right there. And then he fights out of Doom, Doom Crew Chin. In this matchup, it's going to be a pretty interesting matchup because with the explosiveness, he's going to go up against a guy who's really good uh, grappling and then is really good, uh, getting guys down and then using his height, his six foot five height and reach to just ground and pound guys and then hit him with really good strikes. I, I don't see this one being a TKO or a knockout like Christian Edwards usually does. But in this matchup, I do see him uh, getting uh, – uh, decisive, uh, unanimous uh, decision victory over Ben Parrish. I think he's going to be able to take him down. He's going to be able to ground and pound him, but uh, Ben Parrish will be able to stay in long enough to get to the decision. I think this is going to be a decisive three rounds to none victory for Christian Edwards. He's going to do a lot of the takedown. Uh, he's going to do a little bit of work on the ground. At some points, he's going to try and lock in uh, in a submission. He won't get it, but then he'll come back up, do a little bit of work on uh, and stand up. But then he's going to take down uh, Ben Parrish again because he, he doesn't have the best uh, takedown defense. But it's going to be enough for uh, Edwards to take him down with force, and then he's going to pick up another victory. And then he's going to move up uh, the rankings even more, where Belter will keep slowly doing a slow push for him uh, until he gets to that point where they're going to have to start feeding him very good talent uh, to where we can actually see what we have in him. So in this one, I have Christian Parrish by a uh, unanimous decision victory over uh, uh, over Ben Parrish. So get the victory to Christian Edwards. And the and then the next matchup that we have on here, we got a matchup between a uh, middleweight matchup between Austin Vanderford versus Vabian Edwards in the middleweight division. I am really looking forward to this matchup right here. Uh, this has fight of the night honors written all over it going into this matchup, where anything can happen with these two uh, two guys. You got Fabian Edwards, who is uh, Leon Edwards' uh, brother, and then you got Austin uh, Vanderford, who is, as you know, the husband of Paige Van Zant from Barrel Knuckle uh, 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 Fighting Club. But uh, these guys are two different uh, types of styles where it's going to mesh well for a really good fight. As you see right here, you got Fabian Edwards, who is 4-1 in his last five fights. He beat Lee Chadwick by decision. Falco Nato by KO. He beat Jonathan Basuko by unanimous decision. He beat Mike Shipman by this split decision. And then he lost to Costello Van Seen by split decision. He fights out of Birmingham, England. He's uh, 28 years old, 185 pounds, 6'1", and he has the 79 and a half reach advantage, which is a big note to make in this matchup. And then he fights out of Ultimate Training Center as his uh, primary uh, gym. Whereas uh, Austin Vander, uh, Vanderford is 5 0 in his last five fights. He beat Emerson Freitas by KO. He beat Cody Jones by submission. He beat Joseph Creer by KO. He beat Gratchik Bosignan by decision. And in his last fight, he beat Vinicius De Jesus by unanimous decision. He's fighting out of Portland, Oregon. He's 31 years old, 184 pounds, 5'11", has the 74 reach, and then he's fighting out of Gracie Bar, Portland Gym. This is the classic striking versus uh, grappling wrestling matchup. Fabian Edwards is really well, good, well known, like his brother Leon Edwards, with their striking and uh, – boxing uh, status where they're, they're going to just keep on attacking you with the combinations and the, the striking and then mixing a little bit of kicks here and there uh, throughout the fight. But they're going to try and keep the distance and then just slowly beat you with the, with the volume and, 
and then the hard punch, and when they hit you, it hurts. Whereas Austin Vanderford is a really well-known wrestler where he's going to go for the takedowns and the ground and pound and try and get you that way. And this matchup, uh, it's it's all going to depend on how well BB and Edwards can defend the takedown. If he can defend it well and keep the fight standing, he's going to pick Austin Vanderford apart standing up with the, the combinations that he's able to do and just wear out uh, Vanderford. Whereas if Vanderford can get a few uh, takedowns down and keep the fight on the ground for at least half the fight, he can wear out uh, Edwards a little bit and get the classic uh, ground and pound going where he can hit him in the body, hit him in the face, and then just get him out of sync and then keep him from getting those combinations and the, and ahead in the scorecards early, whereas he, Vanderford could get ahead of Edwards in the scorecards by taking him down. I think that... Uh, Fabian Edwards is going to be the favorite, but I feel like in this matchup, Vanderford's going to get him down early. And it might not be a unanimous decision victory, but it could be a, a, a situation where Vanderford gets him down early, has him on the ground for a while, wears him out a little bit, but then towards the end of the, like the second, third round, Fabian Edwards gets that second win and then starts attacking Vanderford. And I could see a, a classic situation where I, I still think Austin Vanderford will win, but I feel like it could be by split decision where the, the first round goes to Vanderford, the third round goes to Fabian Edwards, and then that second round could be like a split where you're not sure how it goes because early on in that second, I think Vanderford's going to do well uh, with the takedown, but then Edwards would get up and show up at the end to maybe sway the uh, the judges' votes with his uh, boxing. So I had this as an Austin Vanderford by split decision victory over Fabian Edwards, where this will be his uh, niche uh, uh, matchup victory that will move him up the rankings in the middleweight division. And the next matchup that we have here on the on the card, it is the co-main event of the evening. This is a big time matchup uh, rematch. We have a bantamweight matchup between Darian Caldwell going up against uh, Leandro Higo in a rematch of a title fight from two, two years ago, which saw Darian Caldwell pick up the victory within just seventy eight seconds by submission, which is crazy knowing that uh, uh, Higo is uh, very well known for his uh, submissions and his grappling game, whereas Darren Caldwell is known for his uh, wrestling and grappling, which match up great in this matchup in itself. But as you look at the the notes uh, over there, we got Darren Caldwell, which to note – He's coming back down to uh, to the to uh, bantamweight after his failed uh, quest to win the featherweight grand prix. He uh, lost to uh, AJ McKee within within the first two minutes by submission, uh, which uh, which he got. He was on top of a uh, AJ McKee, and AJ McKee was able to choke him out with the the guillotine to pick up the the victory on on his back. Which uh, now you got Caldwell who gained weight and is moving back down uh, a division to uh, the to uh, to bantamweight where he was the champion uh, for a little while. But he he is two and three as you see in his last five fights. He lost to uh, Yoji Horiguchi by submission. He lost to him again by decision. Uh, he lost to Henry Kraus by he beat Henry Kraus by decision. He beat Adam Borks by submission, and then he lost to AJ McKee Jr. by submission. As as you know before, he's fighting out Deerfield Beach, Florida. He's thirty three years old, one hundred forty four pounds, five ten, and then he has the seventy four reach uh, of edge, and he fights out the famed Sanford MMA. Uh, gym where they have a whole bunch of uh, top five fighters in each division training out there. Whereas you got Leandro Higo, who ha- is 22 in his last five fights. He beat Joe Tom Manglio by a uh, decision. He lost to Darren Caldwell by submission. 
He lost to Aaron Pico by KO TKO punches. He beat Sean Bo- uh, Bunch by submission. And then his last fight, he beat Ricky Bandejas by submission, rear naked joke, uh, choke. He is playing our Brazil. Uh, uh, Natal Rio Grande de Norte, Brazil. He's 32 years old, 135 pounds, 5'8 height, and then he has a 72 reach. And he fights our fight ready MMA. And then his primary is Pitbull Brothers. So he, he, so he trains with the theme uh, Pitbull uh, duo in this matchup where you're going to look for that him to get some recognition in that gym other than those uh, two guys that, that run the gym. But this is classic, uh, like I said before, uh, a grappler submission artist in Higo against Darren Carwell, who is a wrestler. I think with with this matchup, it's going to be almost the same as the last matchup where – Except for the fact that Caldwell is going to have a little bit more weight uh, on him uh, than than the last matchup. He, he, he has uh, Higo by five pounds, and I think he's going to use that to his advantage, and he's going to do a little bit of the same where he's going to take down uh, Higo and try and ground and pound him and then lock in uh, another submission on him, which is crazy for Higo being a submission uh, specialist. But he's got to watch out for Higo because – uh, one thing that is the Achilles heel for Caldwell, it's his uh, uh, getting beat by submission where he puts himself into a bad situation and then he gets submitted by guillotine. That's that's the go-to submission on uh, Darian Caldwell. So he's got to watch out that when he takes him down that he that he's careful not to get guillotine like he did last time uh, against AJ McKee. But he should be able to, to take down a Higo do a little bit of uh, striking on the ground, and then just cruise to a, a unanimous decision victory. I don't think he's going to knock out Higo. That, that's not going to happen. I don't think he'll submit him again. I think the the path of victory for Caldwell is by unanimous decision victory uh, and to get that uh, second victory over Higo. But Higo has ha- does have that submission path of victory where he can w- pick wait and wait for the right uh, time and then get that a guillotine choke on Caldwell since he puts himself into those bad situations and pull out a shock and upset over Caldwell. But I still have uh, Darian Caldwell by a, a unanimous decision victory over Leandro Higo in this in this co-main uh, event matchup for Bellator 259. Now moving on to the main event of the of the evening. We got a big time uh, matchup, as you see right here, in the women's featherweight championship between Chris Cyborg defending her belt versus Leslie Smith. Uh, this is the second time they're meeting now. And the first matchup that they had, it was uh, only 60 something seconds uh, long. Where you had uh, where you had Chris Cyborg of all things beating Leslie Smith. By submission, you're not you're never going to see that happen often, but it happened there. And Leslie Smith decided that she wanted to stand up and trade with uh, uh, Chris Cyborg, and then it wound up getting hit, falling down, and then Cyborg locked in the submission and it made her uh, opponent tap, and that that's what led to uh, uh, Chris Cyborg holding the belt right there, uh, continuing her career for a. Uh, Likely until we see her lose next, but it, as you see here, we got the stat, stats right here. Chris Cyborg is four and five in her last five fights. She beat Yana Knitskaya by KO TKO ground pound. She beat uh, she lost to Amanda Nunez by KO TKO punches. Then she beat Felicia Spencer by decision victory. Then in her Belter debut, she beat Julia Bud by KO, TKO, punches, and body kick. And then she beat Arlene Blenko by submission. And then, of course, she, she fights out Brazil. Uh, she, and then she, well, she's from Brazil. She fights out of San Diego, California. She's 35 years old, 145 uh, pounds, 5'8", has a 69 reach. And then she fights out Shootbox Long Beach Gym. Whereas her opponent, Leslie Smith, is uh, 
four and five in her last five fights. She fights. Uh, she beat Irene Aldana by uh, unanimous decision. She beat uh, Amanda Lemos by KOTKL. She beat Sunid Kavanaugh by majority decision. She lost to Arlene Blenko by decision, unanimous decision, and then she beat Amanda Bell by unanimous decision. She fights out Pleasant Hill, uh, California. She's 38 years old, 145 and a half pounds. She is 5'9", uh, 66 reach, and then she fights out Cesar Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Gym. Uh, in this matchup, of course, Chris Cyborg is a master striker in the, the women's uh, uh, divi uh, division, whereas Leslie Smith is more of the grappler, uh, uh, close together submission artist, where she's going to want to get the fight close and then wear her opponent out. The first uh, fight, of course, Leslie Smith tried to trade with her, so she's going to need to learn that standing and training with Chris Cyborg is not going to be the way to get this victory uh, over her for the for the for the featherweight championship. Cyborg, on the other hand, is going to want to stay and trade as much as possible because as long as they're standing on their feet, Cyborg is going to be able to use those power hands to uh, uh, inflict pain and uh, and uh, punishment on on our opponent. If Leslie Smith can get this to grapple on, get the fight down, or just have them locked up to the point where she can push her against the cage, wear her out a little bit, and then eventually get the fight to the ground, that would be a best chance to possibly, and this is possibly, sneak out a unanimous decision victory just by limiting in what Chris Cyborg can do to her uh, striking-wise. But she's got to watch out for the, the for the submission game because that's very underrated by Cyborg. She doesn't have to use it that much because of her striking, but when she uses it, it's very effective. But uh, if I, I see this being a situation where Leslie Smith's going to want to probably be too uh, into this fight where she's going to want to stand up and trade a little bit, but then mix in the grappling. And I feel like when she, she stands up and trades, she's always going to risk that chance that she's going to get knocked out because the way that Leslie Smith throws her overhands, she throws them over wide several times and then i feel like cyborg is going to game plan for that and she's going to shoot for like the the body punches and when she does that or she's going to duck and just hit her with an uppercut and it's just going to knock her out by in this matchup i feel like chris cyborg's going to win by second round tko knockout with this one i think the first round Leslie Smith's going to be uh, content with grappling. She's going to contain Cyborg, limit what she's going to do. But then the second round, she's going to get away from the game plan, do what I just said. She's going to throw those over overhand shots, and Cyborg's going to time it right, duck, and hit her straight in the face with a with a uh, uppercut and knock her out, and retain her Belter uh, Women's Featherweight Championship, and, and then move on to the next uh, competitor in the mat in the in the division. But uh, that will wrap things up with the the Belter two fifty nine. Uh, uh, preview show by yours truly, D Bake of Cage My IQ. Uh, uh, once again, I have Cyborg winning, I got Carwell winning, I got Vanderford winning, and then I got Christian Edwards winning on, on the main card of Bell Tour 259. And then we are Cage My IQ, the best place for MMA content. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And Twitch, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the content. And like I said before, our sponsor is 99Jersey. Use promo code SportsBoxShow20 at checkout to receive 20% off your next purchase. If you like jerseys, 99Jersey.com is the place to go. And let them know that Cage My IQ sent you. And then that will wrap things up. I'm your host, D Bake. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching this episode of Cage My IQ on the Sports Box. 
please remember to follow us on all of our social media outlets. On Facebook, at Sportsbox Show. Twitter, at Sportsbox Show. Instagram, at The Sportsbox Show. Find us on YouTube and join Outside the Box, our Facebook sports discussion group. The Sports Box is brought to you by our sponsor, Showcase Sports in Hamilton. Showcase Sports for the elite athlete. And also our friends over at Crowdplay. Download the free Crowdplay app today and use promo code THEBOX at sign up for 10 free points. Thank you for joining us. 